So here's a case, and I wish I had, I, I'm going to get this scanned, but because uh, it would be better to see from, from low power. But this was a, a draining nodule on the trunk that looked like a, a cyst. There's kind of a cystic space in the middle, but no lining. What's this right here? Does anyone? Like granulation tissue. Very good. Granulation tissue. So important to recognize. Such a common kind of simple thing. But man, granulation tissue can look really wild sometimes. And it definitely, um, starting out, I remember thinking it looked pretty scary. Because it's very busy, right? It's got big, plump endothelial cells in these vessels and then all this inflammation mixed in neutrophils and and uh, in, and uh, in this case a lot of eosinophils mixed in here histiocytes lymphocytes all blended together and then there's a bunch of fibrin lining uh, this uh, central space here but no actual cyst lining tons of egos hmm well the key here it's not in the middle of the cyst, but out here. Now, what is going on? Can anyone figure this out? That is not human. It is not human, right. We have an alien invader here, a non-human life form of some sort. Wow, it's quite pretty, isn't it? I don't know what all those parts are, but they're not human parts. I, I can tell you, like, what are those cells or structures? I mean, they look like giant cells at first. I don't even know, like, what's going on here. Oh, that I recognize. What's that? Muscle. muscle. Skeletal muscle. Look at that. And then here we have an outer wall, an exoskeleton. And little bits here and there of that yellowish-orange uh, stuff called chitin, right? Here's some more. And look, sometimes this is an arthropod, right? The question is which one. Sometimes arthropod exoskeletons have these very uh, jagged little ridges or lines. Again, I'm sure an entomologist could tell me all about these things, but I uh, can only only have enough time to learn so many things. And derm path and soft tissue uh, is uh, more than enough for a lifetime for me. So in any case... What, uh, does anyone know what this is? What kind of arthropod we're dealing with here? Myiasis, like a fly. Myiasis, bird. bot fly. Yeah, this is a maggot, a, a fly larva. Way prettier microscopically than uh, they look to the naked eye, which is true of pretty much everything in pathology. It all looks pretty under the microscope, even if it looks awful and nasty in real life. So this whole thing is the maggot, the fly larva, and it used to live inside this little burrow here in the skin. So the fly lays the egg in the skin and it turns into the little larva, the maggot, and it's got a little hole that it breathes through from the skin surface. And the body is none too pleased um, with having this maggot growing in its skin. And I know maggot makes it sound grosser, but that's what it is. It is a pretty nasty little infection or infestation rather, excuse me. And then the body is creating granulation tissue and granulomatous, uh, I mean, it's not much granuloma here, but a granulation tissue response, sometimes with granuloma and with a bajillion eosinophils. Eosinophils can be seen in lots of settings, but one of those settings that you particularly see it is when you have um, uh, helminths, like worms in the skin of different sorts, like larva migrants, or in the setting of bot fly or other things. So rarely do I get to see these. Other things that you could think of, if you just had this, because here we're just getting a kind of fragmented piece of the arthropod, you could think about a tick if this were on the skin surface, because it's about this is about the size, it's a, honestly a bit bigger than most ticks I've seen. But if that were like clinging to the skin surface, you could think, oh, maybe a tick. If this were right underneath the stratum corneum kind of pushed down from the epidermis and it was on the foot, you could think of tunga penetrans, tungiasis. There may be some special features of, 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 the, of the organism that can let you tell them apart. But really, I have to tell you, basically, once I see a piece of arthropod, I use the size and the location to, to guide me and then the clinical scenario to guide me to which, which of the, the different arthropod uh, forms uh, um, or species are most likely uh, going on in the patient. So, so that's how I kind of uh, do it is based on the size of the organism and whether it's on top of the skin, in the epidermis, down underneath, and then put that together with the clinical.
All right. So, Botfly.